All right, so today I wanted to talk about a few things before you get into this episode. We uh, we had this guest on. His name's Asa Pickens, as you'll see in the episode as well when you get into it. But um, a couple of things that I wanted to address. We started out the episode by getting into his story, and then we said that we would share his story when he was in prison. He spent some time in prison which you definitely want to check that out. Um, it's an incredible story. But due to everything that happened or took place in his life, we didn't get to that till the later part of the recording, which ended up uh, being short because we ran out of time. So this first episode, unfortunately, we had, we needed to split it into two episodes, and maybe we'll end up uh, uploading the full two hour episodes so it went two hours long and so um the first episode we did not get to that story like we had said in the beginning of the video just because we split it up but it, it will be on episode two so just be on the lookout for that and um also on episode two because as of us running out of time it the full story is not on episode two unfortunately so we're looking to do an episode three and release the entire story of uh, the time that he spent in prison. So I just wanted to address that up front because I don't want you to get into this video and be disappointed that you didn't get to hear that story. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of incredible stories that he shares of what happened in his life. So I do encourage you to check out the entire uh, two hour and maybe even three hours if we get him back on to finish out the the story of the time when he what, that he spent in prison. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Please like and subscribe and share and also comment to let us know what we could do different, what we could do to make it better. Because that's our heart is to make every episode a little bit better. And then to also keep it real, and hopefully you'll learn some things from it, and it'll help you. Thank you for tuning in. We're super excited to have today's guest on. He has an incredible story, and I can't wait for you to uh, to hear it and for us to get into it. So without further ado, today's guest is Asa Pickens. Yes, Thank you for coming on the show. And I just want to start off with an opening question. Uh, how in the heck, I mean, you're what, 40, 46, for, 40, 46, in July. 46. And how do you get such big guns? Because I've been working out for, I've been working out for a few years and I'm nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the stereotype would be genetics, but oh, I, yeah. say that, uh, I do it on, on purpose. Uh, Psalms 103, uh, it's a scripture I like. It says that uh, God satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. So I just believe that my youth is renewed and I and I build muscle and I use wisdom and with working out and nutrition. Okay. I know a trainer that might could help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when he says he knows a trainer, he is actually a trainer. So... Uh, I might need to get your input on that. Yes. So if you guys, that's the other thing that I was going to uh, say. Uh, Asa had agreed to come on to the podcast today, and he volunteered his time to come here. He's made time. Uh, he's taken time out of his day to come on the podcast to share his story, and I really appreciate you doing that. Yes. We're not paying you for this, and you just volunteered your time to come. But the way that people could support you is you do offer personal training. Yes. So if somebody is interested in in uh, being trained by you, they could reach out to you through your social media accounts. And yes, sir. I train <laughs> and actually coach also. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. All right. So let's get get right into that. I'd, I'd like to start by just um, maybe start from your childhood as young as you want to start and uh, begin sharing your story from there. Yes, sir. And, uh, We'll go from there. Okay. Uh, I'll even go as far as back as my name. My name is Asa, and it is spelled A-C-E-A. -E it's usually butchered 
a lot. But as time uh, went on and me studying the Bible, I realized that my name was biblical, but it's spelled A-S-A, Asa. But I was raised, uh, I was named after my great-grandpa, A-C. Oh, wow. That's okay. How, that's how uh, I got my name. And uh, a great thing that uh, my great-grandpa, A-C, did, he was a part of building I-35 through Ardmore. Through oh, Ardmore. wow. Okay. Yes. Because that's where you're originally yes, from, sir. is Ardmore. Ardmore, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. Ardmore, Oklahoma. Okay. Yes, and, uh. How long did you live in Ardmore? I know we talked a little bit about that before, but I don't remember. I was I was raised uh, raised in Ardmore all my life. Went through grade school, high school, et cetera. Lived in Ardmore at a, for as an adult for a while before I moved to Texas. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So you so you were raised in Ardmore. At what at what age did you move out of? Because you were here in Texas for. Well, uh, I actually left Armour when I was 18 to go hey. to college in California. Oh, okay. And I lived in California for All right. three years. And then uh, I came back and was in Armour several more years. And then I moved to Texas in 2015, I believe. So, oh, okay. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Ever since. Very good. Well, welcome to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Great state, Texas. Yep. Yeah, there's like a big controversy between Texas and Oklahoma, yeah. right? I mean, there's like... <laughs> so that's what I was telling you when I was coming down 287 here. You know, uh, I went to Ardmore, but I was raised in the country, what you would consider the country called Milo, Oklahoma. And uh, like truly dirt roads, outhouses, you know, I, I grew up poor country boy. Yeah. And then to be coming down 287 and coming into the Metroplex looking at skyscrapers. And what's funny, I can remember growing up, I was raised by my grandmother and she watched Dallas, the soap opera. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was this this area. And now to be a grown man living in this area. Oh, wow. And the cowboys, et cetera. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, I'm living a dream to. Yeah. So that's awesome. So let's let's touch on that because you brought up you were raised by your grandma. There's a story behind that. Yes, let's let's go into that because I think it's you and I talked about it a little bit, but I'd love for the audience to hear. Yes, sir. So uh, going back to being uh, raised by my grandmother, I was my mom left me. Uh, and my older sister, when when I was a baby, I had no recollection. That's of my crazy. Until I was like thirteen, I believe, and so I was raised by my my grandmother, and uh, she her name was uh, Felon Pickens, and uh, she was overweight, and so there mm. was things that I had growing up helping to bathe my grandmother, etc. Uh, we wow, how old were you when this was taking this place? Is all through. Basically, high school, really. I even I, I didn't share this with you, but my grandmother went through a nervous breakdown, and it was our second one. The first one they said is when Kennedy got killed, that my grandmother mm. had a nervous breakdown. And then I experienced her going, living with her, just me and her, uh, when I was in high school, and I experienced her going through a nervous breakdown. But uh, she was overweight, didn't drive, and uh, so uh, with going to school, I ended up having to go to Ardmore school because I had a speech problem. And uh, so I had to catch rides. My uncle was a carpenter and he worked in town. We always call Ardmore town. Mm. So he worked in town and I would catch a ride with my uncle to work. And uh, I mean, he'd be going to work and I'd catch a ride to school with him. And then uh, going back with my grandmother, I was raised on food stamps. I know the, 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 the method of her getting a check on the 1st and the 15th. And I know the experience of going to the mailbox and getting food stamps. I know the experience of, of going to the grocery store and having a book of food stamps. People nowadays don't know what food stamps are. Mm, you have a yeah. brown, brown <laughs> EBT card, I believe it is, but a book of, of food stamps. So it, it was a real humbling uh, experience being, being poor and, uh, with my grandma being overweight, uh, 
she tried to discipline me, but it was it was kind of hard. But my uncle who lived up the road, he was somewhat the disciplinary. If I oh, okay, so I'm going to call your uncle Gregory. Mm. So we don't we don't want that. But no, uh, I can say that my grandmother wasn't educated or anything like that. Uh, she she did her best. She sent me to church. I knew oh, okay. to go to church, and uh, so that's kind of how my upbringing was. So your grandma took you. Um, she took you to church she, on a regular basis, yeah, or she, she once again, I like I said, she didn't drive. So my uncle lived up the road. Uh -huh. They would, I'd catch a ride. They'd stop and pick mm. me up. We walk out to the end of the driveway. And that was our ride to Sunday school oh, and church. Wow. Now, occasionally, my grandmother would, would go to church. It was funny, uh, knowing the black culture, how black people are animated in church. Mm -hmm. the above. And, you know, when you've experienced the goodness of God, there there can be expression. And sometimes we know some people are faking. But that, yeah. <laughs> I ain't the Holy Ghost Jr., so I'm not going to try to uh, balance that out. But when my grandmother would come to church occasionally... Uh, occasionally, uh, she would shout and stuff like that. It was kind of embarrassing. But now that I look back on it, I was like, you know, my grandmother, she went through some things and, and she she knew God. And I mean, she experienced the goodness of God to the point where I was known. I went to church mm. in Easter suits. So we are uh, every year got to go shopping for an Easter suit because I had an Easter speech every year. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Okay. So that was like the highlight of the year. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so uh, most likely whatever I got for Easter, I was wearing it to church every Sunday until the next year. <laughs> oh, wow. So you said that you are you had an outhouse? Yes. So a lot of people don't know what, what outhouses are, but uh, back in the day, uh, you didn't have running water. Some places didn't have running water. Uh, so growing up, storm cellars. Mm -hmm. uh, I know what a smokehouse is. Okay. And really, before my time, they had smokehouses where they put meat and stuff in to cure and canned vegetables and stuff like that. But truly, an outhouse to go out and, and use the bathroom. I've been in situations where there were was not running water. Wow. Yeah, because... I mean, I grew up that way, yes, but sir. I grew up Amish, yes, and that's pretty common amongst the Amish. Yes, so, sir. but you're like, you're. I mean, I've heard of a few people now from outside the Amish community that, but you're, you're really an exception to that because you're you're not that old. No, sir. I mean, there's no. not that many years ago. No, exactly. So you know, I, I grew up basically my childhood was in the '80s. And then throughout high school, well, I graturated in '97, so mm. no, it's not too far, not, too far out. Yeah, as you think it's mainly because you guys were so poor and you're living out in such a rural, yes, rural yes, place. Yes. yes. Uh, maybe when I was in high school, they paved the roads. I can remember. Oh wow! Uh, uh, getting, uh, I believe it was digital television. So we mm. had, uh, antennas, uh, channel 10 and channel 12. Uh, those were the two channels that you got. Now, people who had money had the big satellites, mm. satellite dish. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was Dish Network. When Dish Network came out, and I believe I was in high school when Dish Network oh, okay. came out. And so, but going back to town, now people in Armour, like when I went to my aunt, they had cable. So you got to watch this oh, they had uh, cable. But uh, in the country, we didn't have cable. I see. Yes, sir. So uh, take me back to being a child uh, in your childhood. Your mother leaves at what age? From from the get-go. Oh, she left from the get-go. Yes. yes. Uh, wow. Was, so she she was never around. No, no. I, I um, wh where was your dad? Do you know? Uh, in and out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow, it was, that's what, crazy. So what's, what's funny, uh, I've had just through life, and this is just being real, uh, the the thought of having a few dads. But, mm. but the guy who was, they said was my dad, his name was William Hightower. 
and it's uh, when he wasn't in and out of jail, they lived in Ardmore. I'd go stay with him some. And uh, oh wow, so you actually you actually did spend yeah, some time yes. with your biological dad. Yes, and so this is what's crazy too. Uh, my grandparents and my uh, grandfather was a pastor at the first black AME church in Ardmore, and he was a military chaplain. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Wow. I just want to say for the audience, because I, 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 I started out by saying I've heard your story or some of your story. I've heard, I'm realizing I've heard very little of his story because we just met yes, uh, not that long ago. And so um, we, we actually met in person one other time other than here meeting here today. So this is mind blowing to me when you told me you had a lot of stories. I mean, I believed you, but yes, it's like, this is, this is pretty wild. But anyway, um, back to your childhood. So you, you spent some of your time with your biological dad, yeah. but it was, no, uh, some, sometime summer, maybe go spend a week or something like that, but it wasn't a lot at all. Okay. What what do you think you learned from your dad, whether it was a positive <laughs> or a negative thing? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, so, uh, and I somewhat followed in the footsteps. My dad was a hell raiser. Like I said, he'd been in and out of prison numerous times. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he's is banned from the city of Ardmore. Seriously. Wow. And, uh, and so my dad... The what I learned from him truly was not positive. Uh, you know, to to fast forward, I experienced things with uh, uh, sexual immorality as I got older, and it was things that I seen in him. Mm. Uh, playboys under the the bed, which I didn't know what it was at that time. Yeah, having women over, coming and going, all the above, and uh. My dad, he did drugs. Wait, so that's, so you're saying that's not a positive thing? Because there's a lot of people that participate in that. Yes. I mean, they do that on a regular basis. Yes. And there's even uh, very successful, what appear to be successful shows out there promoting this stuff. Isn't, yes, sir. isn't that a positive thing, though? No. And, and, and so what? We, we go back to uh, being a male and we go back to being a black male. Uh, a black male, not black male, <laughs> but to, to, to see women or to see naked women or see uh, what we would know as fornication or sexual immorality, mm -hmm. that was okay. That's what men are supposed to do. But now, uh, as 46 years young and, and being a man of God, I know that that was just all sexual immorality. And mm. It wasn't good. And it actually shaped my mindset at a young age. Wow. Do you feel like, because if we fast forward, I know uh, there's some things took place and you ended up in prison. Yes, sir. Now we're moving, we're moving pretty fast in the story. I would like to, I would like to stay on your teenage years. Yes, sir. Um, but do you feel like, you participating in that stuff at a young age caused you to go down the path that you went down that ultimately ended up? Uh, we, we talked about this earlier. Uh, I just feel that there's a, a, a curse. It's, it's like a curse. It's a, a generational curse okay. that, that what people call addictions – are in families because nobody is taught different. Mm -hmm. And so I would say if I was educated and taught different, then possibly uh, certain things, a lot of things, not not just the, the thing that it uh, uh, caused me to go to prison, but a lot of things, the relationships, et cetera, that yeah. wouldn't have happened. But, uh, you know, it's it's all good. So you, you so you you would say an addiction uh, an addiction is considered a curse under yes spe especially if it's generational 
If it's uh, uh my my grandpa was at my great grandpa was at call it my grandpa was at call it my dad's at call it. Oh okay. So, I gotcha. mean, it just runs. In yeah, my yeah, genes. yeah. I mean, I, it, there's no way it's gonna get. My great grandpa had high blood pressure. My dad had high blood pressure. I mean, I'm I am doomed to have high blood pressure. Gotcha. So that you would call that a, a generational curse. Yes. And that yes. you feel like that could be broken. Uh, yes, most most definitely. Okay. All right. So people are gonna want to know how could you break that? Yes, I mean, sir. how can you? How can you say, okay, obviously you're on a different path now than you were, uh, or that your dad was on, or maybe is still on? Is your dad still around, or? <laughs> do, do you really want this part of the story? Or we'll you, take or, it. I or think or do you want to back up and. and, and <laughs> yeah, let's 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 back up wherever you want to okay. begin with that. So so we're gonna we're gonna go back to. Uh, childhood uh being being poor raised by my grandmother i i believe that uh i would say that i was kind of materialistic but i always got hand-me-downs i had big mm. and i would get so growing up you know nike tennis shoes or Jordans yep. or even converse you know if i got something like that new that was that was big and it was only exceptional times maybe christmas or or birthday or something like that. Okay. Any, any new bike or something like that. Those things were a starter jacket. You know, something like that was very special. And so uh with with being poor, I always I wanted a better life for myself as a young person. So number one, I always worked. I, mm. I hated being poor, so I worked. I, I was in the hay field, I hauled wood, I worked for people in the community, my uncle is a carpenter. I uh, pick pecans. Uh, mm. I used to sand crawdads. Now, people really, I'll show y'all country. Sanding crawdads is taking a sanding net, and I we'd go in a pond and and catch crawdads, crawfish, and sell them to fisher people who fished in the community. Oh so, wow! So I always per se had a hustle, and always wanted more but knowing being raised by my grandmother and being on on welfare that she wasn't able to provide these things mm. and uh then from that i was sharing this with my wife the other day i used to steal i used to, oh, I used to steal. Wow. big time thief because i couldn't afford anything mm. and so i i stole that's wild do you hear that i mean it's like you couldn't afford it so you just you thought the right thing or the way to get it is to just go s steal it or take yes. it from someone else. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so what do you, f I mean, obviously, cause if I'm, if I'm thinking about my son and I actually went through a period of time, um, that, that I dealt with that as well yes, as sir. a kid. Yes, sir. And because I, I mean, I grew up, my parents were super poor as well. And, yes, sir. and, um, uh, I don't think I don't even know if any of my siblings know that, but um, that I went through a period of time where where that took place. But if you're, I mean, I'm just thinking. I have a son, and at what age did you do you think you started stealing? Like I, I would say elementary from uh, stealing candy from my teacher. Mm, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and the, and that grew from uh, being in sports. Uh, and I, I grew up in sports. That was that was somewhat my my release. And and I could say that I was blessed with athletic ability. But that was my release to play sports. But you better believe I'm still in. Wow. If, if 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 somebody is leaving their locker open, I mean, for money, jewelry, watches, whatever. So it started as a thing that you you did because. You you simply I mean you were a kid you yes, couldn't sir. afford it and yes, you sir. and so there's maybe there's a lot of kids out there that are dealing with the same thing. Yes, sir. Oh, what advice would you give them if you went back to the whatever age you were at when you first started doing that? What advice would you give to that kid well, right we, now? We always think that we have to have something, and uh, in in training I tell people you want short term gratification or long term success. 
Mm. And so when I was stealing, and if anybody's stealing, it's a short-term gratification. Man, I I need that candy bar. I just got to have it. Or I, I need that watch. But maybe, but maybe this kid's like dealing with like he's really hungry. He's yes. stealing food. Yes. Or so uh, the the thing which men have a problem with is humbling themselves and ask. Mm. Hey, I'm I'm down and out. You know, I, I need I need help. Uh, is there anything that I could work? Can I wash your car? Can there's something uh, at a store? Hey, can I take out trash to get some? food that's that's good inspired or that's really like good that. if y'all are going to throw out anyway mm-hmm. is there something that i could do to to provide for myself please so simply just asking for help yes you well, have not because you ask not that's so true <laughs> we still do that today yeah. right or yeah. at least i do i mean there's times when i'm well not stealing i'm yes, just exactly. just clarifying but yes, just like I don't ask yes. when I could just simply ask for help. Um, you feel like, like the, obviously as a kid, like you have to have trust in the people that you're going to be asking yes. too, right? Because, I mean, is there a, was there a disconnection there? Like you didn't trust people in your life at the time to say, hey, like I, I really would like to have this. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that, that it wasn't a trust factor there and you know i didn't i was i was raised with without me knowing but i know it now i had a complex Mm -hmm. of not being wanted my Uh, okay i mean what 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 does a kid wow left him my dad's in and out of prison my dad don't don't care enough about me to be straight to keep a job to stay Mm -hmm. sober etc to be in my life and so therefore uh, the people or the, the man figures or uh, female figures or whatever, they were distant. They were my aunt. They were my uncle. There was someone in the community. So I didn't have that closeness to, to want to ask mm. because I'm, once again, I'm getting the leftovers. I'm getting the hand-me-downs. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not legitimate. Yeah. 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 So, at some point, the story starts to change, but there's a lot that you had to go through in, in order for that to happen. And we're going to get to that. So just bear with us and through this. Um, I mean, there shouldn't be any bearing. It's very interesting how you got to that place. But take me through like your teenage years. And you said you went to college to play football? Yes, sir. Okay. So my, my teenage once again, just going through through Ardmore, uh, junior high, seventh and eighth grade, a uh, uh, tr- troublemaker. Uh, but but played sports was football has always been my number one sport, and uh, everybody seen the potential that I had. But also, I'll I, I can honestly say this to back up. Uh, I had a speech problem when I was growing up, also, mm. and I really considered myself dumb. I, I really didn't consider myself. Smart. I had a problem with uh, math. Uh, I could say grammar, etc. I, I I was smart mm. enough to go to school, yeah, and, and to to be attentive. But uh, I don't know if I would say I had a, 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 a any kind of disorder. But I would I wasn't smart like pre-algebra and algebra and stuff like yeah. that. like Chinese to me. Yeah. And so, uh, but sports was always. My, my deal ain't even growing up, though. I had problems at times in junior high and even in high school being ineligible because I wasn't able to make my grades. Yeah. And I want to say that goes back to being raised by my grandmother because she wasn't educated. So I didn't really have nobody to sit me down, per se, to teach me how to read. I didn't have anybody to really to sit me down to teach me the timetables. I didn't really have nobody sit me down to, to show me multiplication and division. Yeah. Then being, this is not excuse, but being scatterbrained and a, a troubled kid, my attention span wasn't long enough in the classroom to do it. If that makes yeah. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. That does make sense. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I could I could relate to that because I I did not do well in school either. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I think it's. 
you know, it was it took me so long to even start on this podcast journey because I just felt like I didn't have much to offer to the audience, but realizing that uh, my story inspired is inspiring hundreds, if not thousands, of people because there's lots and lots of people that deal with the same thing, right? I mean, yes, sir. you meet. I'm sure you meet a lot of people that are that are in the same exactly. the same uh, boat you're you were in at that age, or exactly. that are still dealing with that, and so. That's why I think um, your story is so inspiring because people can listen to you and realize that there is still hope. There's still hope to get out of that. There's still hope to make a change. Uh, we were talking about, you know, mindsets earlier, and that's something that I've developed uh, in my life is uh, your mind. Uh, the, the war is won or lost between your ears mm. of the mind. And, uh, and even with pertaining to education, going into college, I had the mindset of these get degrees. And so I was selling myself short to excel wow. to a A plus student, which the potential is in there. Mm -hmm. But I had the, the, the mindset of just getting by and that, you know, get somebody to write my paper, show up to class, you fill in the blank just so I could stay eligible to do what I love to do, to play football, which was to get to my ultimate goal, playing the NFL. Okay. So so you you were playing football, and obviously that takes a lot of hard work yes, and dedication. Sir. Yes, sir. Right? So yes, sir. you're willing to put that time in. Yes, sir. Not necessarily too concerned about your grades. Yes, I was a jock. <laughs> yeah. So what's a jock? <laughs> they, they just care about – sports they they're oh, okay um, well it you know it's 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 the stereotype of of guys being interviewed and uh don't know how to handle their interview because they're not educated but they know uh, the oh wow okay so you see that a lot in oh, the yes. well in the same thing you know college football and in sports or in general that is so big that teachers professors, etc., pass kids for the sake of sports. That's wild. Yeah, you, you better so, believe it. So they're using the kid oh, yeah. you, uh, to uh, their advantage. Yes, you, you better you better believe it. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean just just take time and look at college sports. Well you could even go to high school, but look but look at sports and how much emphasis America puts in sports. Yeah. Look at oh yeah. Sport. Okay your your lowest player NFL player gets paid more than your college professor. That's crazy. Your your lowest NFL player gets paid more than your high school superintendent. You fill in the blank. Yeah. You make a great point. I didn't even think about yes. that, but why why I, wouldn't it be I, that I, way, right? I mean yes. the the elitists are going to Well, well, this is a big big deal and I've experienced it in my my home hometown. Uh the athletic directors, uh -huh. so head coaches, football coaches are also the AD, and they're getting six figures, but our our teachers are getting nothing. And that's just, crazy. Yeah. But that's the emphasis that is put on sports. Just follow the money, huh? Yes, exactly. Just follow the money. Exactly. And so... But you're not coming at it from a standpoint of like you didn't love football. You no, love no, football. No. I, I love football to this day. At 46 years young, I could line up and play for the Dallas Cowboys. There, There is not a doubt in my mind mm. that I could go play special teams in the National Wow. League. I, I, when football is on, I'm, I'm watching it. Now, That's... I've got to the point where especially not putting confidence in the Cowboys. And, and I'm a old boy. I'm a senior. <laughs> Boomer Nation, but uh, it Boo. <laughs> oh, so, so you go to Texas, right? Yeah. Oh, you're a long one. You look like you're from Austin. <laughs> no, I'm actually a Vikings fan. Yeah. I, I love the Vikings. Uh, Terry Cousins, <laughs> they had a quarterback deal with him, uh, Patrick Mahomes, and somebody else. But uh, Cousins is his the 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 detail he has put in to be a. Uh, Exceptional NFL quarterback is it's amazing. So yeah, he's a Viking. But uh, no, it's just the, the 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 sports 
it was it was a, a release for me. Uh, and I can even say, continuing through high school, I had a, a good uh, high school career. And uh, my cousin, he went to the University of Miami. And this is a part of me, me, me growing up. He went to the University of Miami. Well, being in Ardmore, I seen my cousin get recruited by the University of Miami, Notre Dame, uh, Colorado. Uh, football fans out there will know Dennis Erickson, a great coach at Miami. Mm. He came to Miami's house and had fried chicken. Lou Holtz, great coach at yep. Notre Dame, came to Miami's house and had fried chicken. Uh, a great coach at the University of Col- uh, Colorado, Bill McCartney, came to Miami's house and had fried chicken. And I wow. got to see it. Well, my cousin ended up going to uh, the University of Miami, and I turned 16 at Miami. And so you football fans know who Ray Lewis is, mm-hmm. uh, The Rock, uh, Rohan Marley, who is the son of uh, Bob Marley, was on the cover of GQ magazine. And the list goes on and on. Well, I turned 16 around all those guys. Oh, wow. Coral Gables, Florida, University of Miami. I turned mm-hmm. 16. And so I got to be around all these guys in the University of Miami in the late 90s and early 2000s. Well, even through the 90s, was a college powerhouse. Mm. I mean, you go look up the, the, the U. And I mean, some of your greatest players come through the U, play in the NFL, you fill in the blank. So I got to experience that, once again, coming from the country. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma, Little Town, Ardmore, Oklahoma, to being in Miami, in the University of Miami, and being around all these guys that are elite college football players that go on to have elite uh, NFL careers in The Rock, uh, an acting career. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. So who's your cousin? What's his your cousin? Is, his name is Tosh Johnson. Tosh Johnson. Yes, okay. Yeah. And he played for Miami? Yeah, he played for Miami, and he pursued the NFL also, and I actually followed in his footsteps. So we go back to uh, high school. He ended up transferring to San Diego State. So I had a, a great – I had a good high school career, but I wasn't recruited. Mm. Once again, uh, we go back to education – uh, you remember you had the ACT and the SAT. Yeah. And I knew in myself that, man, I'm not smart enough to be able, even if I wanted to go play college football, I'm not going to be able to pass the SAT or the. Uh, wow. I can remember thinking this. And so I'll never forget one day I got called into the coach's office and uh, uh, I got a letter and it's from San Diego State. And I just went around like I. I won the lottery, and I was like, man. And then when it was all said and done, I was like, man, I got this because of my cousin Tosh. But let me back mm. up. In my high school career, my junior year, I was uh, – my sophomore year, we had a coach, Ronnie Tips, and I played as a sophomore. Uh, I was backup running back. Armour is a big powerhouse school, and Armour has produced a lot of athletes. And mm. for a guy to play as a sophomore and a running back was very rare. Uh, played, okay. And I'm not giving stats, like patting myself on the back, but I averaged almost seven yards a carry. And that was wow. certain plays. Well, this coach ended up leaving, and so we got a new coach. And it was a black coach, Milton Cooper, Coach Cooper. Mm. And so they changed the offense, et cetera. And we got to our first playoff game in, in, in high school, in the playoffs, and we got into it. I got yelled at for missing a uh, a block and I said no the other the guy ran the wrong way well I walk off the field mm. middle of the game my junior year and so boom that was my my football career and so fast forward come into my senior year football season start and I'm not playing football and this is what I'm known for doing this is, wow this is what I love. and I've been a good running back since sixth grade mm. uh I idolized Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson was my, my favorite running back. Number mm. 34, that's what number I, I, I wore. Uh, oh, wow. Bo Jackson. Oh, okay. he, he actually was a two-sport athlete, played in the NFL and Major League. And so I started my senior year not playing football. And people was like, like man, Asa, you need to come out, man. You need to humble yourself, per se. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And so I come in my senior year not knowing what to do because football was my life. I stopped playing yep. football. I stopped 
playing track. And if there was a ticket per se, football was going to be my ticket out of the hood. Mm. So oh, it was my wow. Cousin's yeah. Ticket out the hood. Mm. And uh, any other black guys that did good, majority, it, football or sports was their ticket out of the hood. Yeah. They wasn't teaching entrepreneurship and all that stuff. You know? Wow. I mean, it's dope, prison, utero, or, you know, you make it out. Yeah. Sports. Yeah. You, know, you didn't have too many options. Yeah. And so, uh, Long story short, I end up going in to, to uh, talk to Coach Cooper. And uh, he let – this is what he said. He came back to me a few years later. And uh, he said he wasn't going to let me on the team. And he said – I said to him, uh, so you saying a man can't change? Mm. So I tell my head coach. And he comes back to me years later. He said, when you told me that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, I end up being back on the team. I had to sit out the first two games and end up playing. Had a pretty good senior year. And then, like I said, I got the one letter from uh, uh, from uh, San Diego State. And then, man, I, I knew it was over. So growing up, I've loved horses. Mm -hmm. I, I've loved horses from the get-go. Once again, being poor and black, I couldn't afford horses. So mm. we had people in the country who had horses. I would bum to ask to ride horses. I would walk up and down the roads in the hot summer. I got family and friends to testify to this. Just walk next to people riding horses. No just way. Around it. What? And, and I actually, I have a mark on my stomach. I got abs now, but you can barely see it. You got to look close. <laughs> a horse bit me. I got teeth marks right here on my ass. And so... I've loved horses, and uh, and I desired to to rope. Uh -huh. and I taught myself how to rope with an extension cord from a Kirby sweep. No way! I seen an old Kirby sweep sweeper in the ditch, and I went and got a steak knife and went and cut it, and taught myself made a rope. And so to to go back with my passion of of of, of horses and roping, there was a black cowboy growing up named Buckwheat. Okay. I don't know what his real name is, Buckwheat. And both of the top of his thumbs been cut off through rope and cowboy. Yeah, a rope can cut you just like a razor. Oh, wow. So Buckwheat, I used to sneak him out bologna sandwiches, and he gave me my first rope. That's crazy. Yeah. And so growing up, I always had the passion of horses. I, I love horses so much. So to keep going, I didn't get a football scholarship, so... Uh, there's a school called Murray State in Tishomingo, Oklahoma, about 30 minutes uh, of, uh, from Ardmore, and they had a veterinarian program. Okay. And so I went to college to pursue to get a degree as a horse vet. Oh, wow. That's a completely <laughs> different shift. Did, did you I mean, see that coming no. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is where the the cowboys start to tune in. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so, uh, went 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 to school to be a, a horse vet. Okay. And, and once again, I knew I was in too deep in my head pertaining to education. Yeah. But with that, this school had a rodeo team, and that's when I got introducing to roping, really. Okay. This is calf roping and, and, and team roping. Oh, so okay. So I got to hanging around the Cowboys and the Ropers at the barn, driving down to the barn in my 84 uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass <laughs> to a parking lot full of dooleys and trailers. Mm. And, I, and, and I'm, I got Nike tennis shoes on, denim jeans, T-shirt, and a big herringbone gold chain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so backing up just a little bit, because I hear like, you made that decision, and I've made plenty of decisions along the way that were simply me putting limits on myself and not yeah. and not necessarily the lack of education. It's just me simply believing I can't because I'm not educated enough. Do you feel like that was uh, playing in your mind at the time that you got the letter from the from the college to go play? Professional football, oh, college football. Uh, college football. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Um, so if you were to, if you were to redo that with the mindset that you have today, what would you do different? I would probably ask for help of what what do I need to do educational wise to make this mm. a possibility. So you would you would think it would be possible. Mm-hmm. Before you didn't think it was possible. So here, let let, let me back up to to, to high school. So uh, I experienced some death growing up. Uh, let me go back up junior high and high school. I experienced some death growing up. So my fifth grade year, uh, this time of year we had spring break, and several of us guys, me and my cousins, uh, left from Franklin Elementary School. Mm. And we go to the YMCA. Okay. Or more, and we uh, we're going to swim. So one of the rules at the YMCA that you had to have a lifeguard. Well, us being young and dumb, we decided to jump in without. And with that, my friend Jody Franks, he hit his head when he jumped in, and uh, he da- he drowned to death. Wow. Uh, me and my friend That's Derek crazy. Peters, we tried to pull him up, but he was too heavy. Mm. Excuse me. And so I can just remember the paramedics being there. And they're pumping him and doing CPR and oranges coming out of, out of the side of his mouth. And so then uh, going on through my high school years, I was in the streets also. So I I was uh, gang affiliated uh, in Ardmore. Uh, the neighborhood Crips came on the scene per se. In the mm. So I was, I was gang related. I sold dope, crack, coke, weed, pills. You, you fill in the blank. Pistol packer. I kept, I, I I had guns, a gun on me at school before school shooting started. Wow. <laughs> so this is how That's far crazy. Left, this, this is how far left uh, I, I had went. And so uh, then in the streets, uh, one of my cousin's best friends, he got killed. And so I mm. back experiencing death in my life. He got killed, got stabbed to death. And this was my senior year. And then to to stay in the the realm of being in high school and, and pre college, my grandmother who raised me eighteen years and eight months, I found dead a Sunday morning. Jeepers. Yeah, that had to have been that had to have been a really, really, really tough season to walk through. Yeah, my, my senior year. <laughs> so with that <laughs> look, even in my senior year, this is so good, maybe not. I got in trouble. Uh, A girl swung at me (laughs) at school. (laughs) And just a natural reaction, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a woman beater. But the natural reaction was to swing back. Mm -hmm. And I hit this girl. And I got arrested. Mm -hmm. And so I got suspended my senior year also. Oh, wow. I got suspended for like two weeks. Well, it threw me back. Well, I end up going to night school to get my credits. So my counselor tells me, that, uh, you know, you take these classes, you'll be on credit uh, online to, to graduate. Uh-huh. The week of graduation, this is my senior year in high school, my counselor comes up to me and said, we messed up. You're one credit short from, from, no from, way. from graduating, but we're going to let you walk. Mm. So I walk and people don't know that I don't have my degree, but I end up going to college without a high school diploma. That's crazy. The story continues. So we we go to Murray State, and uh, I get introduced to roping, and and I love it. Mm. And I was partying, et cetera. I, I'd go to class, but I, I end up flunking out of Murray State. And so uh, from there, I try to get a job, et cetera, and I'm living in, in the streets, and I'm living in crack houses no bigger than this with roaches crawling on me all through the night. And I'm just, uh, I ended up working on a ranch. Now, what's funny is that everything that I went to college to learn from a vet program, I learned on this ranch. Oh, so I know wow. how to artificial disseminate horses. I know how to collect semen. All the stuff that I went to school for, I learned hands on oh, wow. working at a ranch. Well, through this period, this is, this is 97 coming out of my senior year in high school, coming into 98. And I'm, I'm rock bottom. You know, my, my high school sweetheart and broke up with me. I mean, all, all the above. Mm. I'm, I'm just at rock bottom. Well, my aunt, she lives in L.A. 
And for years, because I was in trouble, that they tried to get me to come out and live in L.A. It was two, yeah. two places. My cousin, he coached uh, at, uh, at Weatherford High School here in Texas. And then my aunt lived in California. And so they tried to get me to come to Weatherford my my uh, senior year. And uh, people who know Weatherford, their mascot is kangaroos. And I was like, <laughs> man, I'm tired. I can't go beat no kangaroo. Yeah. Well, anyway, so – I ended up hitting rock bottom. I had a horse. I ended up hitting rock bottom. And I was like, I can't take this anymore. This is when they had pay phones. And I, I, I went and I called my aunt from a pay phone and I said, I need change. I want to get from here. And she said, well, you're, you're welcome to come out here. And uh, so I sold my horse and I flew to L.A. Uh, July 6, 1998, 1030 departure. Will Rogers Airport, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 2.30 arrival, LAX, Los Angeles, California. Wow. So you think he knows, that you think you know that that uh, there was a change in direction in your life. Yeah. I mean, you were, you were rock bottom, yes. and, and obviously you memorized that flight. Yes. Like, yes. like it was a life change. Yes, yes. And... Uh, what I mean, were you at that point of taking that flight out to your aunt's house? I mean, you you feel like you were just built up with anger from all those losses over the years, or over those few years, or I was tired of being sick and tired. I mean, you were obviously involved in a lot of things, but <laughs> yes. but if I look back over. Um, over some of my life when I was a teen, yeah. like I had a lot of anger yes. and, and I don't know if you can relate to that or not, but yeah. w- what's the cause of the pain for those, obviously is it undealt with pain from uh, those losses? Undealt with. And I, I think the anger, we, we go back. Uh, I can remember when my mom, I'll tell this part of the story. My mom lived in Washington, DC and man, I think I periodically, talk to her when I was young or on the phone, but really had no, and she went and had other kids, uh, my siblings in, in Washington, DC, and they moved back to Oklahoma, uh, when I was around 13. And I can say, that Oh, they wow. Mm. And they, they end up living next door, uh, to me and my grandmother. Uh, and I can remember having a broom fight. With my mom. Like, <laughs> no I hated, way. I hated her. And, uh, and so I, I feel that just life in general, I just, I had, I had enough. And, and this is what Milo and, and, and Ardmore, this is what I've experienced for 18 years of my life. Mm. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. I need, yeah. I need, I need something different. And, uh, I, now that I, I reflect on my life, there's always been an uh, ambition in me for more. It's always been an uh, ambition for me to, to dream big. Uh, and, and that's what that was, a step of faith. Of like, man, you got, you got to get out of here. Yeah. So at that point, you take a flight to your aunt's house yes, in sir. Los Angeles, and things slowly start to get better, right? Yeah. So, so we go back to mindset. Uh, my mindset changed uh, when I got to L.A. So what L.A. did, it introduce me to successful people mm. okay what is a successful person well, it, what what we would like to call six what the world calls success uh we go to you're around professional athletes okay i'm in la yeah actors singers movie producers i i mean i experienced the whole hollywood lifestyle for for two wow years. okay and so we get to LA and my aunt, she works for Universal Studios. So what's funny is that she would send my, my grand, we had a fireplace growing up and I can remember my grandmother had a signed autograph of James Earl Jones. Mm. So we, we think about Lion King and we think about uh, Sandlot. Yeah. And coming to America and I can remember, and so, and, and then Aaliyah, I don't know if people remember Aaliyah, she was a sweetheart, she was beautiful. But I had a signed autograph picture of uh, Aaliyah that my aunt sent. So I had visuals that I seen. Oh, day. wow. Now that I look back of it, yeah. of quote, successful people. Mm. And so 
Also, this is a time when I go to LA that my cousin is in and out in the NFL. And oh, okay. So, and then he's uh, at some point too. He's in San Diego, and so that's a, a part of the story too. He's just right up the road from me. I say right up the road. My wife says, "How far is up the road? A hundred miles." <laughs> so, so uh, I get to LA, and uh, my aunt, she, like I said, she works for for uh, 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 Universal Studios, and then we go back to my fitness. My aunt's friend worked was a manager for 24 hour fitness. So that's oh, okay. what opened up my door to the gym life and really starting to to work out. Now I worked out in high school, but I was really country strong from just being a country yeah. boy, hauling wood, hauling hay, carpenter, yep. you know, working with my hands. So I was just naturally strong then. But then when I got to LA I really understood about working out. And so uh I the first junior college I went to, I tried out. I said I'm I'm football. Well, here let me back up to Murray State before I get into my football story. So I'm at Murray State uh, at Tishomingo. College football is on in uh, Saturdays, and I'm saying to myself, "Man, I know I can play college football." And I, I'm watching this at oh. Uh, at Murray State, and they had a flag football league, and I showed out in that flag football. Mm. And uh, and I didn't remember <laughs> remember this too. Working on this ranch, I had these old Nike boots, and there were some young horses that took off running one time. And they, if they get past this gate, they're in open field. And it's over with. Oh, and I run, run, and I cut those horses off, and I'll never forget this guy, owner Greg Jones. He said, "I've never seen anybody so fast in my life." He said, why aren't you playing college football somewhere? I said, because I love riding horses. Mm. So now we, 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 we fast forward and I get to L.A. And so I went to a school, tried out, and it was called L.A. Pierce. And uh, man had a good practice. And they was like, man, we'll give you a scholarship, man. We'd love to have you right now. And then... I went to another school that was closer to my aunt's house. She lived in Sherman Oaks uh, called Van Nuys, uh, Los Angeles Valley in Van Nuys. So I ended up walking on junior college football uh, oh. in L.A. Valley, and I played two years of J.C. ball in L.A. Valley. So when I got to L.A., I had a friend, Ron Atkins, that was my, he, he was my homeboy. So we'd go to the club, uh, the, did the clubbing scene. We used to go to this place called the Palace right across from Capitol Records. So mm. I grew up seeing pictures, scenes of movies of Capitol Records. And oh, right wow. In the club across from Capitol Records. Uh, grew up a Lakers fan, and now I'm at a celebrity basketball game at the Great Western Forum mm. in the wood where the Lakers play. And I, I got a picture with me with my legs crossed sitting where Jack Nichols would sit. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Uh, and, and when I first got out there, it was what you call st starstruck. Uh -huh. I'd see people all the time. Uh, the L.A. Zoo, growing up, now I realize how bad Three's Company was. Uh, but <laughs> watching Three's Company and then going uh, for a biology trip to uh, L.A. Zoo. Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the show uh, with on the beach, the lifeguards? Uh, what was the show? I don't remember. Anyway, I, don't, I didn't uh, grow up yeah, watching yeah, TV, yeah, so. Exactly. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, one of them with, and so I remember driving around Malibu, Malibu Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, I can remember seeing the Santa Monica Pier on television. Yeah. Venice Beach. I'm walking on Venice Beach. I mean, you fill in the blank. Uh, and it even goes from now, I know you know this one, the 70s show. Our junior college team, we went. And we were on the set of the 70s show. Mm. And that's when it first came out. Uh, I've been on Rap City. I mean, the 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 list goes on and on. <laughs> that, I mean, I went from, from crack houses to condos, from the Arbuckle Mountains to the Hollywood Hills. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. My, my friend Charles Law, his house was the highest house. In the Hollywood Hills, and you can just see the Hollywood sign. Just. Wow. And I mean, experienced things like that. So uh, I, I got a picture on my phone with Snoop. I met Snoop mm. out there. 
and and what I realized when I was in LA, I was like, man, these cats put their pants on one leg at a time, just like I do. Mm. They just had a dream and they went after it. Yeah. And that's what, and, and you know, you see all this material stuff. You see Lambos and Ferraris and the houses. You you see all that stuff out there. That's just boom. And I'm like, you know, this is this is possible for me. You just you just got to get out there and get after it. Uh, I used to, I rode my mountain bike. For, it was five miles from my aunt's house to the junior college. And so I'd ride my mountain bike to school and back. That was 10 miles. And then sometime I'd go back t- twice after football season and work out. So I rode at least 20 miles a day sometime on my bike. And then I would ride my bike in the Hollywood Hills. I'd put it in the hardest gear. And it was motivation telling myself mm. I'm going to be able to afford one of these houses. Wow. Uh, and so that was that was my motivation that I'd ride my bike up the Hollywood Hills and just coast back down. That's awesome. So yeah, that's great. That, that's that's what uh, L A uh, brought to me. And then growing up in high school too, I I think I was in drama all four years. Oh okay. And so I can say that I'm animated, uh, uh, charismatic. You, you feel them like a sense of humor. You know, the Bible says laughter does the body good like a medicine. Yeah. And so uh, being in L.A., I was like, man, I'd like to act uh, or even model, uh, even to this day, like sports apparel or, or, or Western apparel. Uh, like, man, I, I'm the guy. I'm a black cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in shape too. I'm yep. yep. So, uh, but then I was like, I'd like to be in a Western or something like that. And and I and I dabbled with with people and entertained the the possibility of of doing some acting and it mm-hmm. just, uh, L.A. just opened up the thoughts of possibilities. Yeah. So, so even up to today, like you're still leaving that door open oh, yes. for for acting. So, sure. Sure. if somebody's listening to this podcast and. <laughs> that's awesome so well hopefully um this will bring you some new opportunities and and uh and somebody will be able to you know benefit from from you being able to model for them or whatever the case may be so and that's uh uh one of the things that god has given us all gifts and I've realized what, what what my gifts are. And there's a proverb that says that a man's gifts makes room for him and brings him before grace. Mm. And so I, I, that's something that I stand on daily. And, and, and these opportunities have, have come to me. So, I mean, uh, yeah. un, unlimited possibilities. I, I, I don't have that stinking thinking that I did when I was in high school and growing up. Mm. There's endless possibilities. Yeah, because I think we started off, we started off on this on this journey i asked you a question would you um like what would you say to the to the 18 year old or this or the 16 year old self if you went back to that high school uh or back to the the time when you were getting signed on to a team and and you said you didn't have the knowledge or you didn't have the the education that you needed to be a part of the team like what would you say to that um well you know to to go back we're going to get to this part of my story there are other options so when one door closes don't give up yeah but you had a mindset right you had a mindset what i'm what i'm and and i need maybe i need to re-ask this question or ask it a different way you had a mindset of like like I'm not good enough yes. to be able to do that, right? Yes. That's that's what kept you yes. from stepping into yes. that. Today you don't operate out of that same mindset, right? Yes. So what do you think you would do different if you were back then? And I guess you did kind of ask answer the question to some degree. You said you would you would uh you would ask. Yes. But but this is I was saying this, there's a scripture, Hosea four six, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When we don't know that there's information out there, then we become ignorant. Mm. Stay ignorant. Okay, so you just finished watching episode one of Asa Pickens' story. And so 
the second half of his story will be released <clears throat> next week. And you will definitely want to watch this as well. So we do um, apologize for not being able to release everything at one time. Well, technically we could release everything at one time. We're choosing to split it up because there's so much going on in his story that I felt like it's better uh, for the audience if we could split it up. Because some, uh, some of the people that have been listening say they have about an hour to listen to a podcast. And we may end up uh, posting the entire story after everything's said and done. But uh, I just want to thank you for listening to this first episode and head on over and listen to the second episode, which will re be released in a week from now. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, it's already been released. But uh, you definitely want to check out the second episode of that. And then uh, also like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support and we'll see you in the next video.